Hi, I'm Mike James, Smartphone Photography Training. Thank you so much for joining me. I know that, I'm just gonna shut this screen down here. I know your time's precious. I really wanna show you this, this photo that I captured yesterday. Uh, it's a flower photo, here it is here. And uh, it was really interesting when I set this up, when I, I was getting really frustrated thinking, oh, I can get a much more dynamic and impactful photo because I actually, I actually grew that passion fruit plant for two years just to take that photo. <laughs> I know, I know, geeked out, didn't I? A bit, bit crazy. But I've seen other people of it and I've been being inspired by other people taking photos of passion fruit and I really wanted to capture something. And, uh, and I realized something that when you capture uh, multiple compositional techniques in the one photo, it becomes so much more engaging and packful and, and, and stunning. So not saying that's the best photo, but it's a really good educational photo to go through some of these compositional techniques. So 16 I found. Uh, some of them are a little bit overlap, but, um, but so that's what we're going to get into tonight is composition. So we're going to talk about composition, why the belief, one of the beliefs and why, the reason why I've got that in there is uh, a lot of us, and I'm one of them, I didn't think of myself as a creative type. I had 20 years plus in photography, working in photography, it was very technical, didn't feel like I had a creative bone, couldn't, can't draw stick figures, can't play an instrument. My sister and my dad have got those genes. So I just, I gave up and thought, okay, I'm just technically minded. The great news for people like you and me is that uh, we have these rules and guidelines that once you start playing around with them, you become aware of them and they become part of your toolbox and get out there using them. We all of a sudden become, become creative. We start, start getting into this art form of photography. It's really, it's really exciting. So it's one of the, it's one of the biggest um, belief factors for me is, uh, was to try and knock that over and go, okay, well, well I'm, now, I'm now creative, I can't believe this. So that's why I'm really excited to bring this to. So we're gonna go into the tactics and tools with the 16 of them there. And at the end, we're going to do, just do a quick recap and I'll go through them. This is not gonna be a long tutorial, just a nice quick one. All right, so I'm going to bring up my screen now. Okay. And we'll try that again. Here we go. Perfect. Get rid of that one. I have this screen here because it's a way that I can actually, I'll put myself up in the corner so I can talk to you. Because I like to talk to you. There's no, I mean, I've been to, I've been to workshops and uh, online workshops and tutorials where you're just talking to, you're just listening to them. It's like, oh, come on, just engage with me. <laughs> I'm here to listen to you. And so that's why well, I'm putting myself in the corner there. All right, now I have this set up in this app so that I can actually doodle over top of it and draw and show you what I'm talking about. First one is off center. So the main subject here is the, the large passion fruit. And you can see there's the center of the screen. And so the, the head of the, I'll call it a head, I'm not sure what the actual terminology is, but the main part that's sitting up on top of the flower there is actually off-center, both on the horizontal and the vertical axis. So it's off-center, that's what I've tried to achieve there. So that's number one. Number two, and I've written these down so I can get through them, rule of thirds. Now, like I said, there's gonna be a little bit of an overlap. So when you, if you're using the rule of thirds, you are actually placing objects off-center. So rule of thirds, what is it? It's basically the grid lines that's on your phone. So you've got two horizontal lines, two vertical lines, and you create like a, a tic-tac-toe board and you have nine squares. Now the squares don't matter so much, it's the lines that you're looking at and it's where the, the ideal spot to place your subject is where those lines intersect. So there's four dots in the middle there. So if I break this one up, whoop, get rid of that. Try that again. Okay, so I've basically got my tic-tac-toe board like that. So what I've done there is I've actually placed it on one of those lines and it's in the, the main part of that flower is actually in one of those intersecting points, those four intersecting points that I'm talking about. All right, so there we go, that's rule of thirds. And that leads me to my next one, which is a kind of an extension of rule of thirds again, but it's one that people don't really talk about. It's called the one third, two thirds. What I mean by that is that you can see here is the top left corner, that's one third. So if the main part of the flower is on, okay, let me just, let me rephrase that. The flower is over on the one third, so it's on the first section of the frame. 
and it's filling up two thirds of the bottom part. Okay, so it's off center on one third, so it's on one third, which is on the one side, and it's taking up two thirds of the frame. So it's basically, and I'll get to this one shortly where we talk about um, emphasis and dominance and that sort of thing. So basically using that rule, have it off center and they're taking up two thirds of the frame. That's basically it. All right, next one is leading line. So let's just get rid of that. Boom, 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 boom. And I'll just see if I've got the chat going here. Oh, Sally's here, fantastic. Hi, Sally, great, great to have you here. Fantastic, all right. Now we have a bit of a workshop, don't we? Because now you're here and I can see someone's here and I can engage with you, that's fantastic. Um, okay, so leading lines. So I'll just get rid of these. It's one thing, so I, I create tutorials and, and put them online, that sort of thing, but it's so much better when I've got someone there that I know I'm talking to, it makes this so much more enjoyable for myself. Leading lines, so you can see we, here, we have quite a few leading lines, don't we, in this pedal, these pedals. And what that's doing, what do, you, what do you think that's doing by having those lines? It's getting our attention, isn't it? It's grabbing our attention and it's directing our attention. So that's what basic composition is. A composition is the breakdown of all the different elements in the scene and how they interact with each other. So here the pedals are interacting with, with everything and they're grabbing our attention because they're a little bit brighter and pulling our attention where we want it, which is, which is yeah, so if you think about um, roads or you'll see a, a nice um, coastline and you'll see the road, you'll see the road um, zigzagging or the S-curve, that sort of thing. That's a leading line. We kind of pick it up and go, oh, there we go. That's where we're going. Yep, fantastic. That's it, drawing your eye in. Fantastic, Sally. That's exactly what it is. It's drawing your eye. It's directing your attention. When you get really good at this, it's, and more often than not, it's accidental, but when you get really good at this, you can actually attract the attention of the viewer, and then you can actually say, okay, first I want you to go here with these leading lines. Then I've got this other compositional technique that once you're there, I want you to then go here, and then I want you to go over to here, and you're creating kind of a journey for them. It's it's beautiful. It's <laughs> it's poetry in motion in a, in a 2D image. It's uh, it's really exciting. For, for people like myself who aren't creative, having rules and guidelines and principles that help you understand how to make a really engaging, beautiful image makes it so much easier. It does. All right, next one is left to right. This is another one, this, is a little, you, this one you don't hear about very often. But you think about the reason we have compos composition is to make it easy for the person to understand what our intention of the photo is, what the subject is. So we wanna try and make it really easy for them to interpret it. When we read something, when we read a book, magazine, screen, whatever it is, we're reading text, more often than not we're reading text. We read the text, and I see where my finger is on the screen here, left to right, <laughs> I hope I've got that right in the preview here. But basically we read from left to right. So if we have an image where the main subject is on the left and then we go over to the right to look at the context and that sort of thing, we're reading the image from left to right the exact same way. So what we've done is we've, we've taken the mental load off the person gone, okay, you're used to reading left to right, we're going to do the image the same way. Now, you'll hear me talk about this a little bit about um, these rules, guidelines, sometimes you want to break these guidelines. You might intentionally want to have the main subject to the right, knowing, knowing and understanding, hey, this is, this is breaking the rule. But what I want to do, what I'm, what I'm trying to create here is called visual tension. So sometimes we want to break those rules, go, okay, I, I want the person to look at this and go, oh, that's a little bit odd. And just, and it's kind of uh, clickbait, if you like, it's, it's a, a pattern interrupt, it's something there that people go, oh, that's not quite right, or that's a little bit different. So that's, that's why sometimes we break, break these rules. All right, next one, rule of odds, all right? Rule of odds, why do you think, why do you think it would be better to have an odd number of something in this thing? I'm just gonna have a sip of water while you have to think about that one. <clears throat> when you're setting up a scene, sometimes we have the, the ability to get the framing the way we want or we're posing people, that sort of thing. Having an even number looks a little bit more posed, it does, and a little bit more structured. An odd number, having three, 
five, seven. It's a bit more, it's how things occur in nature. It's a bit more random. It looks much more staged. So that's why rule of thirds work. Okay, triangle is the next one. So having a look here, I have a triangle. Okay, so big, and this is why rule of thirds work because you have an odd number and you end up with multiple triangles sometimes. If you take a photo of a cityscape or a landscape, you'll quite often have um, a skyscraper, a building, a handrail, stairs, something, people, where people are looking. So you have a, um, a line of sight, so you're inferring a line. All these things can actually create triangles. So what it does is the person bounces around uh, to all these different elements in the scene. So much better than having a square. Imagine if you have four, if I had four of these flowers and two of them were in the same height and then and in the background they were at the same height, you can see how that would be far less dynamic. Just go oh, yeah, down, across, up, across. It's nowhere near as interesting as going, oh, up on an angle, down on an angle. So yeah, makes it a little bit, um, a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more engaging. Hi Zoe, great you're here. Thanks for joining me. Uh, next one is color theory. So let's just get rid of this. Whoop. Color theory. It's really interesting that color theory can also be a compositional technique. Here we have what we call, um, this is split complementary. So if you have a chance, actually I think I have one here. I do, here we go. I'm gonna bring this up. Okay, so you can see here, here is the, this is one that I use here for, um, from Zoe. Wow, so much movement in a still image. Yeah, I know, it's it's really cool, isn't it? Look, we've got, like I said, we've got 16 different elements that we're gonna go through tonight with this with this image. So this is the color wheel, this is the color theory. You can see here, well, this is a breakdown of all the different types. And what we have here, is it there? There we go, yeah, split complementary. So we actually have two colors that are close to each other. So we have the purple, and then we have the orange that are relatively close, close together. And then the opposite side of the color wheel is green. Now the reason that works is that the green and uh, is contrasting, so it makes it pop. Okay, I'll bring myself back up again. There we go. So if you've seen those photos of, uh, let me just think of one, um, down the forest, and you see somebody, or any sort of travel photos, whether they're in a mountain range, and there's lots of green, and you'll see the person wearing a red jacket. And when you see a red jacket, it just bang, it just pops and really makes you, it really makes it stand out. So that's why contrasting colors and where you place that red within the image will actually, same principle, will actually, your eye will go to there and then we'll go and explore the rest of the image. So split complementary, what that does is we've got two images that are nicely close together and then the two of them together are contrasting against the green. So that's that one. All right, what are we up to? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's eight already, so we're halfway. All right, next one is depth layering, or depth, so creating layering. So in this image, we've got the, the main flower in the, in the front, okay? And the way, we've created, the way I've created the layering with this one is that I've got the main one in focus, so that one's in focus, and then that one there is slightly out of focus, so that's creating a little bit of depth. And then we go all the way to the back. So what I might do is I'll draw it this way. So we go to there, and then we go to there. So having that slightly out of focus and then deeply out of focus, or a lot more out of focus, we're creating that, that depth to the image. Now the reason, the, the way I created that was through the lens that I was using. So I was using a Struman Optics manual focus macro lens. The beauty about that lens is that it is not a magnified lens, it's just one that you can get in super close, and when you're in super close, it creates that really beautiful, smooth, creamy background, as it has here. So that's why I absolutely loved that lens. Super tack sharp focus, really nice. So that's the depth that we've created, that's the layering. Landscapes are perfect for doing that because you'll have a foreground interest, Ideally, you'll have a foreground interest, you'll have mid middle ground, and then you'll have a, um, a background. So foreground, middle ground, background, that creates some depth to the image. And we're layering, layering that depth into it. All right. Next one is, 
I talked on this before, is emphasis and dominance. So we have the main subject, the intention of the photo, the main subject is massive. Right? It takes up majority of the image. And that's what, we, that's what I mean by dominance, by going, okay, you can't miss it. <laughs> this is what the subject is, all right? And then this is where we're using all of them together. So if that main uh, flower was in the center, then that's fantastic, but then we're not using the rule of thirds, off center, all these other things. But so we're using the emphasis and dominance together with it being off center, that's why it works. Okay, next one, a bit closely related, is balance and visual weight. Now, if I had that main big flower there, and then I didn't have that bud on the right there, there'd be this big gap, wouldn't there? There'd just be this void of black on the edge. So what I've done, is I've, I haven't moved anything, <laughs> I've just moved myself. And it took me ages moving around, moving around until I finally got one where I was happy. And having that rosebud there, or not rosebud, the passion fruit bud there, just gave it a little bit of uh, weight and it kind of balanced it. Can you see what I mean there? So, so that, together with that and that, so we add this together on this side, okay, is getting closer to that on its own. So I've tried to balance the weight. And then having a little bit of a gap, an air gap between the flower and the bud on the right there, having a little bit of a gap there also contributes to getting that balance right. And you see this a lot in, um, in landscape images. Because you'll have a big mountain range on one side, and then on the other side you'll have a tree. And if you didn't have that tree, it would look really lopsided, it would. And it give you this, if the horizon might be dead straight, but if you've got a big massive mountain over here and nothing over here, then it, even the horizon can, have, can look a little, bit, a little bit funky. So that's why we try and balance it, make it look a bit more easy to look at. Next one is simplicity. Okay, so simplicity, I've taken a lot of the background noise, uh, not background noise, all the background distraction out of this. In the original image, you could actually see the fence and you could see the wire that I have on my fence because it's a climbing vine. And um, so I, I simplified it, I made it a lot more simple. So then we're just looking at the shape, the form, the lines, all that sort of thing. If we had all this wire there and you had the, the wood grain and everything else, it's, it's, not, it's, it's too much. So I've just really simplified it, okay? Uh, from Zoe, when, when uh, using these techniques, do you recommend having your final ratio in mind? Example, portrait for phone or square for Instagram, for example. Yes and no. Uh, it's a really good idea to do that. And when you're, this is why I love cropping. Cropping is my number one go-to technique because how often, I mean, I was really lucky. I had the time to set this up. I had my hardware light and I was just shining the light directly above so I could get nice even spread create a bit of a shadow in the back to get that depth. But I had the time to set this up. And having the time to set that up, then yes, I intention, and I took ages <laughs> trying to find all these different specific elements in there to try and incorporate lots of techniques in there. But you don't always have that time. And that's why I love cropping because you can actually go in there afterwards and go, okay, now that I've captured that moment and I've captured that travel photo that I can't go back to, now how do I implement these? And then how do I use tools like perspective tool inside Snapseed where you can actually drag a corner, go, okay, I wanted to actually shoot that from a little bit more to the left, it would have been looked look fantastic. So there are editing tools that you can actually go in there and drag the corner and go, oh, that looks, that's exactly what I wanted. That's, so there are tools to go in there with editing and go and fix it. That's another one. There's a bonus one. Thank you, Zoe, that's fantastic. There's a bonus composition one there is that deciding whether to shoot it as a portrait or a landscape. So this one here, I actually shot this as a landscape. But then when I did, there was just kind of a lot of wasted space and the wasted space didn't add to the story, didn't add to the flower. And I wanted the flower, the, the middle of the flower there, I wanted that to really jump and pop. And I'll explain later how I did that. But because I wanted that to be the real subject, having this wide, wide angle shot didn't add to it. It just go, oh, what, what's, What's the main intention of this photo? And the main intention was to drag your eye into that point. So having a portrait didn't. And so it was actually after I took the photo that I've gone, you know what, this will actually look better as a square. And I actually don't take many square photos. So yeah, and it doesn't work here for the tutorial because it only takes up a little bit. <laughs> so it would have been better if it was a, uh, if it was a, um, 
a landscape, so then you'd have more to look at. But that, that was how I took it. That's how I, how I um, edited it. Fantastic. All right, simplicity, we did that one. Framing, okay, so framing. Now, this one here, when I edited this, I used Lightroom and Snapseed. They're the two apps that I used. One of the things that I did was I went in here, and you can see that part of the leaf and that part there. You can see the edges there. I actually went and used the dodge and burn tool and I brightened up those bits. And the reason why I brightened those bits is because you've got that and you've got that and you've got that. Okay, <laughs> you can see what's happening here. I have a frame, so I've created a frame for the flower. Okay, so that's what framing is. A lot of landscape photos, you'll see there'll be a vista, so you'll have a tree, you'll have an overhanging tree, or you'll have two trees in the corners, kind of creating a frame that you're looking through because it creates a vista, something that you can imagine yourself standing there going, oh, that looks like a picture frame. That just looks picture perfect. So that's what framing is, okay? The next one is a frame within a frame. Now I've mentioned that what I, what I really wanted to capture here and, and, and been so envious of other people who have passion fruit at their home is that they can take these sort of photos, is that I just love this bit here. Okay, that's the bit that I wanted. And the outside here, that's created a frame. So we've got here, I've, I've made a frame through my editing, I've created a frame, and then the flower itself has created another frame. So now I have a frame within a frame. Beautiful. All right, getting close to the end. Next, I have a focal point and depth of field. Now, I kind of touched on this with layering, but the difference with focal point is that you have a main subject that make it really pop, make it really stand out. It doesn't necessarily have to be off center and have other elements in there. Think of a portrait, so having a portrait, especially with the phones now where you have live focus and um, what else is there, portrait mode, all these different modes where you can artificially create a blurred background. Having that focal point with the depth of field is, is fantastic. So depth of field is basically, the way a normal camera works is between the camera and the subject will be slightly out of focus. Then you'll have a distance that is in focus and then beyond that will be out of focus again. So that area that's in focus, that's called depth of field, okay? So I'll talk, I'll talk a little bit more about that um, shortly, but that's, that's what that is. So focal point is basically having your hero, your subject of the image really stand out and making sure that that is in that, that depth of field. Okay, all right, next one is background context. So making sure that the background supports the photo doesn't distract it, so you can minimize it. You can minimize, like I, like I mentioned, I actually didn't want to just minimize it, I just wanted to get rid of that fence, so I just made it all black. All that fence, all that, ch all that chicken wire that I had there that the vine is climbing. That's my personal preference, that's the look I wanted. You could have actually thought, oh, actually, I want to keep that in there. I want everyone to know that this is a vine. This is a climbing vine, this is what the flower, this is what the plant is all about. It's all about growing it in your backyard. And so your storytelling. Now, I wanted this to be all about the actual flower and, the, and the, a beautiful, amazing thing that nature can produce. But your story might be, I need that background element in there. And where you, where you showcase that background element so that it doesn't take over the main subject, then that's, yeah, fantastic. That's another one. All right. That's, that's 16. I've got a bonus one though. I've got another one that while I'm talking, I've actually thought of another one. That's, that's crazy. You've probably come up with some more. <laughs> if you do, please put in the comments. If you're watching this as a replay, throw another comment in there and add some more because this is, it's all about communal learning. And, uh, and yeah, and, and, and one of the things I love about teaching is that it, it forces me and encourages me to break things down like this because you kind of, you kind of get into a rut and do things the same way. You don't really think about it. You go, okay, I found my style. I like taking photos a certain way. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's why I get so much out of this. So please feel free, throw a comment in there and, and let us know if there's another one that you've identified here. Don't argue with the ones that I've mentioned because I, <laughs> I did say there will be some overlap and that's okay. I may have, some of them might be the same thing but just worded differently, but hey, it doesn't matter. It's, this, is just, this is just for, for you to kind of 
uh, think about other ways of setting up a photo. So the other one, the bonus one, is perspective. So looking at the perspective. Now I took different photos of this flower and uh, the one that actually, the, the, the ones that actually caught my attention thought, okay, I have to grow one of those plants. It was actually an overhead looking straight down and looking the perfect symmetry because that's another compositional technique is symmetry. Having a perfectly left and right side of the photo looks the same. Now that doesn't apply to this one or maybe it's asymmetrical because it's either symmetrical or asymmetrical. Maybe this is asymmetrical, an extra one. <laughs> um, so the perspective here, by, by changing, instead of looking down at it and going, okay, there's, there's the top view, by getting down and having an alternate view and looking back and, and uh, standing back and going, okay, look at it from a lower angle, I've created that height. And you can see that, like that would be lost. You wouldn't see that height in, a, in an overhead shot. And this is one thing we do with food photography, isn't it? If you're taking a photo of a, of a hamburger, you can take it from above or three quarters. But if you can actually get down really low and actually lower than the midway point of that burger, and the way to do that with the smartphone is flip it upside down so the lens is actually down the bottom, then you can actually get shoot up and go, whoa, look at the size of that thing. It's massive, it's big. And that's what I did here is I just wanted to capture that, that height, the actual everything that's so amazing about this flower. Fantastic, all right. So that's, that's quite a lot, isn't it? So I'm going to recap and go through all those again. Where are we? Here we go. And I think I have it here. Here we go. So off center. Then I have rule of thirds, one third, two thirds. They're both, they're all similar, aren't they? So off center is basically not in the middle. So it's either uh, off center to the side or, or vertically, horizontally. One third, two thirds, basically have your main subject on one of those, uh, one of those lines, those vertical lines and then the rest of the subject fill in either two thirds of the bottom or two thirds of the top, or alternate that around. Leading lines, finding those existing lines in the image where you pick up the attention of the viewer and they go, oh, there we go, oh, oh then it, and then it actually encourages them to look around the image instead of just looking at something smack bang in the center of the image that's static and boring, <laughs> all right? Left to right, that's a really interesting one, not one that, that people talk around, talk about very often and it's about taking that uh, making it easier for a person to read your image that's what it's all about so we're used to reading text from left to right so if you've got a main element on the left and then encourage them to move across to the right rule of odds makes it look more natural less staged and the benefit of the rule of odds is then we can have a triangle so we can have one or many triangles so triangles are more dynamic from one object up and across down and across, so that's the benefit of the triangle. Color theory, there's so many of them. There's complementary, split complementary. It's all about having contrasting colors and where you position those contrasting colors. When I say position, it's identifying what's there and working with it. So quite often you don't have the ability to <laughs> move different things around, but understanding what's happening in the image. Depth and layering, emphasis, so dominance, making that main subject a big thing. Balance and visual weight, so if your main subject is quite big, having something on the side there, it doesn't have to be as big, but something there. So something there that kind of anchors it. Simplicity, so simplifying the image, breaking it down, bring it right down to the, to the form, uh, basic form. Framing, so setting up a, like a vista, a picture frame, some, looking for some existing elements in the frame that can kind of stop the person from looking at it and, and veering off because they go, kind of veer off and go, oh, there's something there bringing me back. Oh, that bring me back, so it, it, it encapsulates. And that's why vignetting in editing is really good, so darkening the edges, so that it kind of creates a frame. Frame within a frame, focal point, depth of field, and last one, the background context. And then we had the bonus one there that Zoe mentioned, was either having it as a portrait, um, landscape, so cropping is so critical. And, uh, and the last one that I, that I, that I thought of <laughs> to throw that in there as well is uh, um, perspective. So looking for an alternative angle. So yeah, so that's all of it. Uh, in the comments, let me know which one of those is new to you because I'm pretty sure, because for me, it was only just researching and trying to come up with the content for this, for this tutorial that I had never heard of one third, two thirds. I've used it, I've done it many times, but it's been kind of instinctive just it's just applying the rule of thirds. I didn't realize that it was actually a thing. So 
yeah, let me know which, which one it was. And, uh, and while, you, while, while you're doing that, because there is a little bit of a lag, what I want to do now is just mention that I have a webinar coming up next week. So next Saturday evening, uh, 8 p.m. Um, Australian Eastern Standard Time. And, uh, and this, is, this is fantastic, I can't wait to do this. It's gonna be a paid workshop, two hours, and it basically, as I mentioned at the start here, it's going to be delivering the whole uh, Tax Sharp course. Okay, so that's there, $89. In that two hours, we're gonna cover all the modules that are in the course, preparing, because I'll break it down into a four-step system to create that Tac Sharp image. And I did that with his passion for preparing the subject and the scene. So I actually brought in that the extra light, brought the extra light in there, so that, um, and I'll go into that in this, by bringing in the extra light, you can change the settings of your camera to, to bring out much more detail and vibrancy in there. Shooting techniques, uh, where are we? Oh, got them around the wrong way there. So prepare, I'll have to fix this. <laughs> so preparing the camera, so putting it into manual mode, you don't have to, and I'll explain you don't have to, but if you wanted to, I explain what ISO, shutter, all that sort of thing. So we'll get a little bit technical. Then we go up here <laughs> to shooting techniques um, and then mobile editing. And you can see there all the inclusions that are, in, that are included in this, in this workshop. So you can come along to the, to the workshop. For the price of the workshop, $89, you can then get access to this full course, three and a half hours of video, averaging 10 minutes each and 20 lessons. And then on top of that, you get all these extra, extra bonuses as well. Or you can just go along straight to the straight to the course, which is smartphonephotographytraining.com forward slash sharp. And then that'll take you straight to the course. And the replay of this workshop will be in there. I know what it's like. Uh, you go, oh, that sounds fantastic, but I can't. I'm putting the kids down or something. You, life gets in the way. <laughs> so so uh, this is part of the part of the bonus for the uh, in the course. This workshop will be there. Because two of the two of the things that I mentioned is uh, cost and value, uh, value and uh, time are the two biggest things. When we take on a, an online course, we all know online courses are fantastic because it, it's uh, having a learning path is the quickest and easiest way to learn to acquire a new skill, but it takes time. So that's why each of the, each of the videos is 10 minutes and it's three and a half hours and I think, oh, okay, I've crammed as much in there, but it's still too much for some people and that's why the workshop is there. So you can just go to the workshop, learn everything you need to, uh, value, that's why I've thrown in all these extra bits here, the video course, the, uh, the workbook, recordings of um, other workshops, the Facebook group, discounts on the Stroom and Optics lens because I'm an ambassador for them and I can pass on the whole, because you've invested in the course, I can pass on the whole uh, wholesale price of that. Fantastic, all right, who we got here? All right, Zoe, split complementary colors. I've used it before, but just didn't know it, it had a name. <laughs> Because of course it does. Yeah, I know it does. Yep, yep. Uh, fantastic, not bad value, great. And Cheryl just arrived. We're just about to wrap it up, Cheryl. <laughs> so, um, but that's the beauty is that, and that's why I'm doing this on YouTube now instead of just in our in our Facebook group because we have a Facebook group where we have uh, um, regular photo themes. I jump in there with tutorials and that sort of thing. But it, but it stays stays there. Two days later, it's disappeared. Whereas I wanted to have this out there so that you guys can um, can come back and view this at any time. So that's great. Excellent. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there. Just double check that I've covered everything. I think I have. Yep. All right. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll, uh, and I'll catch up with you next time.